Hello and good morning. Good morning. This morning I'm going to have a volunteer read us a Bible verse. Brother Ashley, if you would read us Philippians 4, 6. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God your needs. And don't forget to thank Him for His answers. So prayer. What do we know about prayer? We know that's the way we talk to God, right? Yes, sir. So, does that mean that the only time we pray is we pray at church? Yes. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. We can pray yes. anytime, right? Yes. And we thank God for what He's done for us. We thank Him for what He's going to do for us. Yes. We admit where we went wrong, right? Yes. yes. And we don't always have to do it at church. You know my favorite time to pray? 6.30 in the morning in the front seat of my pickup truck as I'm driving to work. So a good thing that we could do, maybe when we're driving, riding a school bus or riding with mommy and daddy to school, that'd be a good time to pray for your day, wouldn't it? You could pray for your day right before you really start your day at school. Because I try to pray in the mornings before work to start my day. If I get my prayer and I get my coffee, I know I'm going to have a good day at work. All right? So speaking of prayer, let's pray. Does anybody want to lead? Go ahead, AJ. So God, we come to you here this day because um, we really want you to take care of us and we really want you to be nice to us and we know you are going to be nice to us. But um, help, please help everybody that is sick and if you can't God please put <coughs> them up there with you and um, we love you and please help us and if you can't then we will be up there with you happy and with you in Christ Jesus name Amen Amen Good morning everybody get your hands turn number 490 number 490 as we stand. standing for our opening prayer. Father God, we ask you to bless this day. God, we're so glad to be here at church 
on this beautiful day. Lord, give Brother Cup the words to let us learn more about you. God, be with us throughout our day, our week, our month. Let us come back here when the time is right. In God's name, amen. amen. Good morning, good morning. Our birthday recognitions, today is the 28th, Brother Gerald Ashley on the 25th, today is AJ's 8th birthday, and on the 30th, Lexi Payne, and not to forget Jim and Jennifer's anniversary today. Sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Prayer request, are there any additions on the list this morning? Kenny Wilson. Kenny Wilson. Got Kenny Wilson. Anybody else? Let's not forget church this evening, six o'clock. Kids, youth, maybe a brief choir practice. December the 12th, we have our Christmas slash Thanksgiving dinner, which, Brother Cup, you're welcome to come, as well as any of the other pastors that have been here that might be watching us. December 19th, we've got our children's program in the morning service. Any other words from anyone? If not, let's turn to number 211, Tell Me the Story of Jesus.
For our ushers, we come for our morning offering. Joseph, want to help out, please? <laughs> help with our offering, please. Brother Lewis, if you bless our offering. Our Heavenly Father, we'd like to ask you today to bless this loving of tithes and also that you would lead and guide us to help better serve you with it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes. 
I will add her on the list. Vivian Eaton's having surgery tomorrow. There's no other word from anyone, I'd invite Brother Darren Culp, Cup, <laughs> come up here and ascend the pulpit. Good morning. 
Turn your Bibles this morning, if you have a copy of God's Word, to Psalms chapter 92. Psalm chapter 92, and as you're turning there, let me say I've enjoyed your uh, singing this morning, and uh, you do a great job on the piano. I enjoyed uh, your playing this morning very much, so thank you for that, and the choir did a good job. That's a beautiful song, and if the Lord is here, then uh, He's really all that we need. So we're thankful and uh, just glad to be able to stand and to share this for a few minutes. And uh, I told one of you that I said, they said something about glad you're here. And I said, well, I'm preaching on Thanksgiving. She said, oh, it's okay. We need to be thankful every day. So uh, I realize I'm uh, about three or four days late. But uh, as far as the calendar might go, I guess, is the way we look at things. But I want to talk to you about, uh, about being thankful and about keeping it. And attitude or gratitude. Psalm chapter 92, verse number 1, and we'll read through uh, verse 5. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night, upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound, for thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. I love verse 1, uh, how that it's just so uh, written so plain. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. That's a good thing to do, is to give thanks. There's a lot of things that aren't good. And there are some things that are good, and one of them that the Bible says very plainly is that it is good for us to give thanks unto the Lord. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we uh, do just want to thank you for this day and for this opportunity. Uh, what a beautiful morning you have prepared and created. Uh, we're glad that we're able to be in your house. Uh, thank you for your word. And, and Lord, I just would ask that you would speak to our hearts. Um, through your written word and through the proclamation of this message, may you receive honor and glory and, and may we leave here just uh, praising you and giving you thanks. In the name of Christ, we pray these things. Amen. Two men were walking through a field one day, uh, just uh, carrying along, and when they spotted an enraged bull who began to uh, run after them, so they did what most of us would do. They instantly began to dart toward the closest fence that they could get uh, to, the nearest one. But the old bull wouldn't quit and just continued on in hot pursuit. And it was soon apparent that it didn't look like they were going to make it to the fence before the bull got them. So they were very scared and terrified. And the one shouted over to the other as they were running. And he said, put up a prayer, John. Looks like we're in for it. John answered and said, I can't do that. He said, I've never made a public prayer in my life. But you must, he said, you've got to. He, with the bull is catching up with us and we're going to get it. And he said, all right. He was kind of out of breath. And he said this, this, he said, I'll say the only prayer I know, the one that my father used to say and repeat at the table before we ate, oh Lord, for what we are about to receive, make us truly thankful. You know, uh, we could stop. I'm here with, with you all good country people and we could uh, sit here and we know in our hearts that how thankful that we should be uh, for the things that we do receive. Many of which that I can tell you that are things that I didn't deserve. And I don't say that. Uh, I, I just say that of, of, good, of the goodness of God and His grace that uh, He doesn't always reward us according to our behavior. He's merciful. He's very gracious, uh, very patient with us. Uh, we could talk about our country and, and we can say, you know, our country is, you know, really drifting away from God. It seems like uh, not just drifting, we're sprinting now, it seems like away from God and His Word in so many different ways. But yet God is still faithful and still merciful and patient. Uh, I believe that one day He's going to deal with sin and the nation's sins. But uh, at least for right now, God is still just being so patient and, and good and gracious to us So, as a country. But I want to talk to us about individuals, about where me and you live. 
about where I am and about where you're at to help us to keep what one writer called an attitude of gratitude. Not just the one day out of the year, but for our life. What should, be mar what should mark us? What, uh, what is one of the things that Christians ought to be known for? And one of the things that we ought to be known for is that we are a thankful people. Uh, we're kind, we're loving, but we ought to always be quick to say, Lord, uh, you know, it's, it's because of you. Lord, you, you've blessed us so much in so many different ways. So I'm going to tell you three or four different things that I think can help us to keep an attitude of gratitude because the Bible says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. First thing that I think that can help us to keep this attitude of gratitude is that we should always be thankful for physical provisions. We should always be thankful for our physical provisions. The Bible says that in the New Testament that Jesus took a few loaves of bread and when he had given thanks, fed the multitudes. Over in John chapter 6, we too should be thankful for our physical blessings. In the book of Psalms chapter 68, the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. I, I love that verse. He daily loadeth us with benefits. I was talking to a couple back there, uh, Chris and, and uh, Bill, and I was talking to him about that my granny's about 92 years old and I said she still likes to cook and she fixes the awfulest lot of chicken and dumplings for Thanksgiving and I ate two big old bowls yesterday that I should have stopped after about a half a bowl, but I didn't. But I, many, many years ago, I used to go and I would eat with her on Wednesdays. I'd get off work and before I'd go to church, I'd go and for a long time, I would just go and me and her would just sit and we would just eat and she would cook. And she wouldn't just cook enough for me and her because when the supper was over, she would she would have these cool whip dishes and little plastic things that she and she would just load it up with all the leftovers. And I'd eat for two more days on that. I'd take it to work. I'd have to sneak it into the church house and put it over in the in the refrigerator that we had over in the fellowship hall because I was afraid some of those other young guys would find it and steal it. But she would just pile that stuff in there. Dessert, uh, Fudge, coconut candy, soup beans, cornbread, uh, ham, all, whatever she was, and she would just load it up. And I would think, wow, you know, I could eat on that, and it just seemed like it just would, it was just too much. And I thought about how that God, the Bible says, just daily loadeth us with benefits. How that each and every day, God just doesn't just sparingly bless us. And so, you know, it, it says that he just loads it upon us, just, just gives us an abundance, really, of what we need. Uh, I didn't notice when I came in this morning, I didn't see any horses hitched up to the hitching post. Now, there may be one or two of you that walk to church, I don't know. But most of us get in the car, most of us got up this morning, had a refrigerator, we poured us a bowl of milk and some cereal, or had, if we wanted it, we, we probably had something to eat. Did you know that most Americans, and I used to know the, the, the dollar amount, and I, I'm afraid to quote it, but it wasn't, by most standards, wasn't very high. Most Americans are in the top 1% of the wealthiest people in all the world. Now, I'm talking about worldwide, you know, that we are, most of us are in the top 1% of the wealthiest in the entire world population. Bible says that in 1 Timothy, Paul said that having food and raiment let us therewith be content. It doesn't take much. God gives us what we need. Uh, and, I, and I could go on and I could talk about personal safety. We didn't, most of us got in a car today and every time you pass somebody, you're about five feet away from a disaster, an accident. How that God just blesses us with this personal protection when we're on the road, when we're at home, when we lay down. The Bible talks about us that we lay down and sleep and we wake up because God sustained us. I mean, we're, we're asleep. We're, you know, God's watching over us and protecting us. So one of the ways that we can keep an attitude of gratitude is to remember that God and be, to be thankful how that God provides for our physical provisions. Secondly, I would say that we should can keep this attitude of gratitude by remembering that God answers prayer. 
At the grave of Lazarus, the Bible says that Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Prayer is a wonderful, wonderful privilege. Privilege. And it's not that we can have the a privilege to pray, but that God has told us that we can pray and He'll answer our prayer. And you and I have the privilege to be able to pray and to pray and that God will hear and can answer and will answer our prayers because Jesus Christ went to a cross and He died. You know, when, you remember when Jesus died, it was darkness over the whole earth. The Bible talked about the veil of the temple was rent in two. It was torn from the top to the bottom. Kind of symbolizes that we now have direct access to, to God. We don't have to go to some priest or to, to a preacher that we can speak directly to the Lord through the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it's not something that we, I mean, we, we take it for granted. I know I do. We, we go into it just kind of, I don't want to say disrespectful, but kind of comes across that way. Light, we just take it for granted. Y'all ever take thing a thing for granted? We we get up, we pray, we think, well, we've done our without really stopping just to think every now and then that we have the ability to talk to the, the Lord of this universe, the God that created the heavens and the earth, that loved us so much that he sent his son to die on the cross willingly, voluntarily, gave his life for us so that you and I can pray. That's a big cost. That's a big cost. It costs God, His Son, for us to have the ability to pray. And not only to pray, but we have the promise in God's Word that He will hear and answer our prayer. 1 John chapter 5 says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So here's my application, and I know I, uh, usually I state my mean points for the Sunday night crowd, so I'm going to give it to y'all hard here real quick, okay? How many of us, let me raise my hand before I even ask, but we can, we are real quick to say, God, I tell you what I need today. We got a real heavy burden. Our, 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 we're facing a, a medical uh, uh, test that we're anxious about, or our family or parents or somebody or something's going on in the community we just get burdened with something we just lay out our petitions in front of the lord we cry out to him and we he 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 blesses through that and how many of us are often we fail to just stop and turn around and say lord thank you for what that is or we'll do this oh i shouldn't say this we'll pray hard for a week about something or longer than that. And boy, we'll just be burdened about something, about a test or something. You know, our, our children maybe are making some bad decisions and we're, we're, we're concerned and we're worried about those things. And God begins it. And at best, sometimes we'll spend three seconds to turn around and say thanks. You know, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying that if we want to keep an attitude of gratitude, man, we need to really spend some time to just say, just to say thanks. Just to say thanks. Sincerely. You know, uh, when I was growing up, you know, kids, especially maybe boys, I don't know, when you're, you know, 8 to 12 or older and you parents really had to teach you to be thankful, even smaller than that. You know, they really had to teach you when you get a gift and Sometimes we'd go to grandparents' house and, 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 and maybe I wasn't going to get what I thought I needed to get, wanted to get. And Mom always had to, you be thankful. You tell them thanks. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There was a lot of years and a lot of times that I would say thanks begrudgingly and didn't mean it. Just real quick, you know, I just got, I don't want to get spanked by my mommy. I better say thanks and just go on and pout, you know. Sometimes we treat the Lord that way. We just go on real quick and just don't really, we just kind of half say it. We just know that we're supposed to mark off the box and, with that really just stopping and saying, Lord, thank you. Man, he is good, isn't he? Man, you look outside on a beautiful morning like this. Folks, we are not here by chance. God made us. God created us. He has watched over us and blessed us in so many different ways. And one of the ways that we can keep that is to remember that God answers our prayers and gives us the privilege to pray.
Keep an attitude of gratitude. Remember the physical provisions that God's given to you and me. Remember that God does answer prayer. And thirdly, I would say to thank God for giving us His revelation. Jesus prayed these words, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Helen Keller said these words, for three things I thank God every day of my life. That First, I thank Him that He has given me knowledge of His work. Second, I give deep thanks that he has set in my darkness the lamp of faith. Thirdly, the deep, deepest thanks that I have another life to look forward to, a life joyous with light and flowers and heavenly song. If you've ever been somewhere where the gospel isn't known, if you've ever been somewhere where the gospel or at least isn't known as much as it is here, you now here we have access to Bibles and churches and and things very abundantly. But when you go somewhere that's not as enlightened or illuminated, you will see just how thankful that we should be for God's revelation. And I'm not trying to, to speak like a, some uh, prophet as far as like trying to preach. I'm just saying we need to be thankful that God has given us the ability to know Him abundantly. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into some kind of some deep water here, as deep as I can. Okay, and it's it, that's not real hard for me, not real deep. Some of you are gonna think, well, he ain't real smart. I'm glad you picked up on that. Okay, I don't understand a lot of things about how God thinks and works and things, but I can I, I do know this. I'm thankful that God put me where He did. I'll have a very godly mother who taught me and about the Lord, took me to church. We went to church every time that when there was service, we were there. Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday school, uh, Sunday evenings, discipleship training. We, we, you know, I, I don't know why. I, I don't understand why I was put in the situation that I was, but God just, through His grace and through His mercy, gave me a wonderful opportunity to hear about God's love, to hear about His Son, and to get to know Him. To where the Bible was, was I don't want to, it wasn't common, but it was prevalent, prominent in my home. It wasn't anything for my mom to pray with me, to talk with me. On the way to church, on the way home from church, she would talk to me and my brother, and, and we would have conversations, and she would... She was active. She sang. She taught. She was very active in the church. A good, a good father that came to be a Christian when, you know, at the same time that I did, and that loved us and worked hard for us and provided for us. We need to understand that, you know, there's a lot of things in life. You know, I get up, we go to job, we work and earn things, but there's a lot of things in life where God's just been merciful and gracious to us. Where, where things have happened that God has just showed us uh, through His mercy, He's given us a clearer understanding of His love. I, I have, a, I have a, a better understanding than maybe some do because of the love that my mom had. I can kind of understand the love that God had. I've got a loving Father. Some people don't have that. And when, I, when you speak of a Father's love, they, that's distant to them. It's foreign to them. But I want you to know that if God has given you uh, blessings in life like that, be thankful if we have an understanding of God's Word, be thankful because it is. this is a spiritually discerned book. Anybody can read it, but unless we are have the spirit in the mind of Christ, we won't really understand it because it's spiritually discerned. In Pulaski County, the Word of God is, as far as I know, preached freely. We ought to be thankful for that. We, we got here this morning. I didn't have to pass any kind of security test. I didn't have to go through some kind of armed guards or pass, you know. I got up, got in my truck, and drove over here under my own free will, so to speak. No, no harassment from the government. Not everybody has that privilege. Not every, not every country, not every nation has that. God certainly has been merciful. 
There are many deep things that I don't understand, but I am thankful we can give thanks even in the things that we don't understand for how that God has worked in our lives. Fourthly, I would, lastly, I'll say this about how to keep an attitude of gratitude. We should remember to be thankful for our physical provisions. Be thankful for answered prayer. Be thankful for God's revelation. And lastly, we can be thankful and give thanks in suffering. At the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, and the Bible says he gave thanks and broke it, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. He gave thanks when he broke the bread and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Philip, uh, a man named Philip Howard Jr. wrote these words. He said, No matter how great his trials may be, every saved sinner can always find reason for thanksgiving. If we cannot give thanks for our suffering, we can give thanks in our suffering. The, the fact is, and I'm not trying to be gloom and doom at all, the fact is we, we all go through hard times, we go through trials, we go through sufferings of just that are just part of being a, in this fallen world. Sometimes we suffer through our obedience to Christ. People sometimes suffer for that. But through all of that, the Bible says that we can still give thanks. And, and you read a verse this morning in the book of Philippians that kind of tied into that about, you know, get to give thanks in all things. To be thankful, no matter what the situation may be. Y'all remember the time in, when Paul and Silas were in uh, Philippi and they were preaching and, and the, the magistrates, and I won't read it, but it's in Acts chapter 16, the magistrates rose up and they... They, they took them, they handcuffed them, so to speak, and they beat them with many stripes and threw them in jail. What did Paul and Silas do? Did Silas look over at Paul, kind of huffy toned, and say, Look what you got us into today, Paul. You know what, Paul? Ever since I've been hanging around with you, it's been rough. I've been in trouble ever since I've hung out with you. Paul could have looked back at him and said, won't you just hush your griping and complaining? I've had enough of my own worries and woes. I don't need to hear them from you. If they would have done that, and I'm, I'm quoting here, and I'm paraphrasing what I heard somebody else say, if, I, if, if they would have done that, those guards over that prison would have looked and thought, those two Christians there, they're just like everybody else. They're just like everybody else. That ain't what happened, is it? The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. Paul and Silas learn to give thanks even in suffering. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm sure they would have probably much rather physically would have rather been in the temple preaching on a beautiful Sunday morning to people that wanted to hear God's word. But through their obedience, they, they were determined that they were not going to be disobedient. They were going to stay thankful. They were going to praise the Lord even in their suffering. If Jesus could practice thanksgiving in spite of all the difficulties of his day, Surely you and I can find reason for thankfulness in the commonplace routine of our daily lives. I'll close with a little thing here from, uh, that I heard from Warren Wearsby, who illustrated this uh, problem about gratitude and, and suffering and how difficult that that can be. He told about a, a ministerial student in Illinois who had been part of a life-saving squad. In 1860, a ship went aground on the shore of Lake Michigan near, near Evanston, and Edward Spencer waded out again and again into the frigid waters to rescue 17 passengers. In the process of doing that, his own health was permanently damaged. Some years later at his funeral, it was noted that not one of the people he ever rescued thanked him. You think, wow, how, how awful. You know, we think, that's, that's bad. Yeah, it is. But let me ask you something. 
How many of us really give enough thanks to the Lord on a regular basis for all that he's done for us each and every day? And I'll, I'll go so far as to say this, that if you're here this morning and, and you've never made a decision to follow Christ, You've, you've heard the gospel. You know what Jesus has done for you. And you know, you know the story about how that he came. He lived a perfect life. God's only begotten son. And that he went to a cross. And he died there on a, willingly. And was buried. And on the third morning, Jesus got up from the grave. Rose. Resurrected. And later, after many days, ascended up unto heaven. Where he lives forever to be. Never to die again. He's, he's eternal. And yet, you look at God and His invitation of His Son and you say, No, I'm, I'm not going to follow Jesus. In other words, thanks, but no thanks. I want to tell you something. You, you, we need to be thankful for what God's gift was many years ago when He gave us His Son. And the greatest way that you can show your thanks and appreciation to God is accept that gift. To say, Lord, I, I, I know I need Jesus. I, I am so grateful, so thankful that you sent your son to die for me. And, and knowing what I know now, I run to this altar. And I, out of, out of, out of uh, repentance and out of uh, just thankfulness and of God's mercy, Lord, I, just, I want to give him all I know of myself to all I know about you because of what Jesus done for me. Don't be unthankful. They say don't be unthankful in that way. You know, there's some of us that are Christians. We need to repent and say, Lord, I, I just want to thank you during this invitation. Maybe you need to come to the altar. Maybe you just need to pray right where you're at and say, Lord, I, I know this is the end of the Thanksgiving weekend, but I, just, I want to just thank you again for what you've done for me. And not just the physical blessings, but to think about the spiritual blessings that through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed my sins forever away from me through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Him, you've never given your life to Jesus, today you'd like to really show your thanks and appreciation for what God did, I can tell you how to do that. You bow your heart, bow your head, and you say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that Jesus died for me, and I want to ask Him to come into my life and to save me. And I want to give all I know of me to all that I know about Him. You don't have to wait for some kind of special feeling or some kind of special emotion. You don't have to wait for the thunder or the lightning. You listen to the still, small voice. You listen to the Spirit of God who speaks and uh, just uh, convicts us in our hearts of our, of our sins and points us to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ where He died for you. Why not this morning give thanks by not just words, but by laying down your life as a living sacrifice to God for Him to use in whatever way that He wants to. I'm going to ask if you all would to stand and whoever's going to lead our invitation to Him, if you all would come forward as the congregation stands, I'm going to ask you if you would to bow your heads just for a moment. We'll pray as they come to, uh, to lead us in our invitation song. We'll sing a couple of verses. Uh, most of you here today may be followers and believers in Christ, and I hope that you are. I hope everyone is. So if you are this morning, and but you, you just need to come to the altar for just a time of thanksgiving. There's nothing wrong with that. You, you can come to the altar for needs, but you can also come to the altar just to offer up a sacrifice of praise as well. Or maybe there's someone here that, that you are lost, that you've never made a decision to follow Christ, and you'd like to do that. Come, I would love to talk with you. Come talk to one of these other brothers, Brother Gerald, or one of these other guys. Or if you're a, a lady and you want to speak to another lady, you go, you go see them. Somebody that you can trust and talk to. But don't let this opportunity pass you by. Let's pray. Father, we uh, thank you for uh, the day. Uh, most of all, we thank you for Jesus. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would uh, bless this invitation, that you would continue to speak to hearts and if there'd be one here this morning that's lost, that this would be the day that you would just speak to them and that by faith they would answer and, and give their life to you. Uh, Lord, we uh, just want to thank you and praise you for all that you do in Christ's name. Amen. Number 201. <clears throat>
Excellent as always, Brother Cup. Always enjoy that. Is there a word, prayer request, an announcement, praise report from anyone before we dismiss? We do. There's no other word. Brother Ashley, would you dismiss us in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we've been blessed by being in your house today. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Reminded of the one who said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. We thank you. We ask you to forgive our lack of being thankful. We're so blessed. We thank you for this message. We thank you for the opportunity to hear it and for the opportunity to respond obediently. So go with us. Increase our thankfulness and our witness for Jesus, we ask in his name. Amen. Amen.